Still have our wits about us. <laughs> <laughs> For God's sake, keep it brief, Andrew. We're poets, not parliamentarians, and it's our last meeting at that. Mm. Brief it shall be, but uh, proper order makes our subsequent disorder all the sweeter, my lord. Right. <laughs> disorder in its proper order. <laughs> Proceed, Andrew. I will. Cornelius, will you hmm. begin reading the scroll? Absolutely. The Charter of the Devil's Alphabet Society. We, the undersigned, conspire to set our hearts and minds entire against complacent decency and bourgeois insipidity to free ourselves from all constraint and scorn both sanctity and saint. One quarter of the alphabet, from A to G, are all here met. Sworn are we to devilry, high-blown words and revelry. Dionysus ever rule us. Andrew, Brian and Cornelius. May Apollo gild our chant. Diva, Eli, Frederick. Right. To this, our names we do affix November 1876. Thank you, Cornelius. Now, uh, gentlemen, any uh, any old business? Oh. Any new business? The chair recognizes Frederick. Well, as well we know, with graduation upon us, this is to be the last meeting of the Devil's Alphabet mm. Society. Oh, shame. Well, uh, Cornelius and I have been talking about an annual reunion. Marvellous. Yes. An excellent yes. idea. Gentlemen. Well, I agree. Cambridge will not soon see our like again. Uh, yeah, yeah, I say on. we hold our meetings as long as Andrew holds his lease. <laughs> <laughs> well spoken, Brian. And I have a, a 99-year contract with my landlord. That should see us for starters. <laughs> There's five of us in agreement. Six. Lord Grant, will you make it unanimous? Aye, with one condition. Since the scroll is made of such fine stuff, let us pledge an unusual oath to do it justice. I propose we each swear to meet not only once a year, but annually, throughout eternity, though we be live or dead. <laughs> Lord Grant, do you, do you seriously advance this proposition? Aye, we are not common men. Why swear a common oath? Furthermore, should a member fail to attend due merely to circumstances of death, I say he'd be deemed dishonourable and find a good round sum on top of it. Since my study is the law, I'm fond of finding a loophole in any agreement. Yeah. Now, I propose we meet each year on the anniversary of this night, All Souls Day, November 2nd, unless for reasons unknowable as yet, the majority of us should, before the meeting, cancel for that year. Well, so that even though I should die, I would not want my vote uncounted. We are pledging eternity. Therefore, I propose a majority of all members must vote to cancel, whether those members be alive or dead. Aye, let death be no excuse to miss a meeting. <laughs> here, here, here. Yes, here, here. Let me see your college pin, Andrew. little wine in that diva. <laughs> Let us prepare a charter. Each of us might fear a bit to sigh. I can't use that desk, Governor. Take it for free. I want everything out of here. This house is no longer mine, and I won't give the man who owns it a single stick he didn't win from me. It's not worth the price of storage, sir. Nobody wants that kind of thing anymore. I beg you. Good night, sir. Yeah, just as well. Just as well. Diva. His death casts a pall on our 20th reunion. Mm. Look, I'll skip the laws and bylaws if there be no objection. After 20 years, I think we know them. Okay. Now, is there any old business? Yes, a bill of charges for our last carousal. 
a matter of one guinea for the plate glass diva smashed, and uh, four for the harlot that waltzed through it with him. Four? Her fee was steep. <laughs> no, she came along free. The surgeon took 60 stitches to lace her back together. Okay. And on diva, not a scratch. Walked through it like a very ghost. Which now, no doubt, he is. How shall we settle this, Bill? Well, bylaws state that an absent member must pay all expenses of the year preceding. Diva may be dead, but he is also absent. Oh, that's right. Incorporeality is no excuse. I move we lend Diva the money and collect it in eternity or at the next meeting if he sees fit to send his ghost. Plus a hundred pound fine for failure to show as specified in bylaw five. Is this the will of the table? Aye. 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 Very well, then. Diva, you owe the Devil's Alphabet Society £115 sterling. Aye, Diva, <laughs> sift the ore of hell and bring it hence, unless you carried your checkbook into perdition with you. Have you no human feeling, Grant? You know allegiance to our code, Frederick. Let us show some respect for our dead brother. We did not form the Devil's Alphabet to show respect. Enough, gentlemen. It's time to sign the register. Eli, will you pass the scroll? What the deuce? There's already a name here. Diva's name, and today's date. And the ink is not yet dry. That is his signature, no doubt. I did not write it there, so help me God. <laughs> well, we're not gathered here to ask the help of God, Eli. I believe there's a fine due for such a slip. Oh, yes, that is so. <laughs> Charge it to me, Cornelius. <laughs> right. If you be with us, Diva, you owe us no gold. Take the place of honour, Diva, uh, as our first incorporeal member. Drink with us. Uh, but not too fast. Uh, ghosts have insubstantial bodies and you've not been dead long enough to know your tolerance. <laughs> no, let him drink his fill and howl the night away. He can walk through Andrew's window now and not break it. <laughs> will you have more wine, Diva? I believe he will, Grant. His glass is empty. If this be your idea of a joke, gentlemen, I do not find it funny. You may carry on if you wish. I have had enough for one evening. <laughs> Lord Andrew? Lord Andrew? Lord Andrew? Andrew. Quick, cut him down. He might still be alive. There's nothing to stand on. Well, find something. But how did he get up there? In view of Andrew's grim death, both Frederick and I feel it would be becoming to cancel tonight's meeting. I, nor do I think I am alone in wishing to go a further step and dissolve the Devil's Alphabet Society. Out of the question, it is an affair of honour. Besides, Andrew has willed his property to us. So very odd. Hanged himself from a high ceiling with no chair to jump from. Very much in keeping with his poetic style. I'd rather not hear such disrespect, Grant. You have changed your tune, perhaps, but I hold nothing sacred save the oath we took, a bond of faith and honour. I reverence nothing else, most especially not death. Well, hold your fire, Grant. Let's put it to the vote. Yeah, yeah. Well, remember, the very nature of our charter demands each dead man's vote must be assessed. If he cannot speak, we must assume he abides by the charter and will attend. <laughs> I cannot deny the soundness of his legal principle. Right. Who declines to cancel? Aye. Then there'll be no meeting this year. By the rules of our society, four votes decides. So the cowardly vote is cast. 
But you cannot prevent me from fulfilling my own obligation. I will attend the meeting, though I do it on my own. Good evening, gentlemen. telephone for help from the house. I'll try to keep them in sight. How are you? Well, in the year since last we met, I've not had one full night of sleep. Frederick, what are we to do? I'm afraid it's no longer up to us. We have no quorum to dissolve tonight's meeting, so the dead men must decide for us. Still, one thing crosses my mind. What's that? Since we have no say in the matter, I'd as soon be hanged for keeping a contract as for breaking it. I shall call for your lodgings tonight. We shall go there together. Goodbye. I'm sorry, my dear friend, but I have not the strength to face the unknown horror conjured by my fears. In any case, as both of us know, we will meet again tonight. I remain your brother in torment, Cornelius. So the final letter of the devil's alphabet falls into place. J. 
gentlemen to our mutual damnation. Old friends, while I am resolved to meet with you each year for as long as I may be alive, and thereafter as we have sworn, I have a proposal to make for our mutual benefit. What has been bound by agreement can be dissolved by agreement. I call for a vote. Who is in favor of dissolving our charter? My Lord, grant your objection damns us all, though your honor is sustained. But pray recall the purpose of the devil's alphabet. High-blown words in revelry, not this sullen, mute damnation. Will you not set all of us free? In the absence of any objection, the devil's alphabet society is dissolved. This meeting is concluded. May God have mercy on our souls. <laughs>